Okay, um, good afternoon, everybody. My name's uh, James Lovelock. I'm a lecturer at the University of Wolverhampton, and I'd like to thank the University of Wolverhampton and especially their Arts Fest for supporting this event uh, this afternoon. And thank you also to the events team who are supporting us technically uh, during this session. And so we're running this session as part of LGBT History Month. Uh, at the moment, um, I'm writing a book on LGBTQ characters and queer representation in musical theatre. And I've been ever so lucky to talk to lots and lots of practitioners across the musical theatre industry about their views and their thoughts on this. And one of the musicals that keeps coming back all the way through is Rent, uh, the musical that was uh, first premiered, uh, as Will pointed out to me earlier, 25 years ago last week uh, off Broadway, and has been a musical that keeps coming back over and over in different revivals, in different productions. Um, and so we're really lucky today to have three angels with us. Uh, we have Will Wilhelm, who played Angel in the Chicago production in, I believe it was 2016, is that right? Yeah. Uh, we have Leighton Williams, who played uh, the role on tour in the UK. Was that 2016 as well? Was that? I think it was, the same yeah, time, actually. So, yeah. 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 Excellent. And then we have Alex Thomas Smith, uh, who played the role of Angel very recently at the Hope Mill Theatre production, which was also uh, produced online uh, during, the, uh, during the, the recent. Uh, events. So I'm going to get each of the uh, panellists to introduce themselves a little bit first. Um, during the session today, if you want to ask the panellists any questions, please use our question and answer um, function and I will look at those questions and I'll read those questions out as we go through. Um, but perhaps if I could get Will, Will if you could just introduce yourself uh, very briefly and, and say a little bit about some of the work that you've done before. Absolutely. Uh, my name is Will Wilhelm. My pronouns are they, them. I am based in Chicago, Illinois, um, where I received my training at Northwestern University and uh, have been based uh, since. There I've been working on musical theater and new plays and all sorts of things. I spent two years um, on the west coast of the United States um, in Oregon, where I worked at the Oregon Shakespeare Festival and was a part of um, a queer reimagination of the musical Oklahoma. So yeah, since then I've been um, creating and writing things and basically fucking shit up and doing a lot of infusion of queerness into uh, every space. <laughs> Thanks Will, thank you, lovely. And then let's uh, go to Leighton. Hello, hello, hello. I'm Leighton Williams, pronouns he and him. And I am a fabulous gay actor extraordinaire. <laughs> Sing, dance, act, whatever you want to pay me to do, run me a check, honey, I'll be there. I have been doing bits and bobs since the age of 13. I first came to this industry playing a role called Billy Elliot in the West End. And then all these years later, 13 years later, I was playing Jamie and everybody's talking about Jamie. It's been really fab to play such, you know, iconic queer roles, Angel, is, was just such a special um, part of my uh, life. It was the first kind of like moment in my adult musical theatre working career that I was like, okay, I got this, I can do this. It's my first leading part as a grown bitch. So yes, and I'm here now still doing bits and just waiting for Miss Corona to uh, let us do our thing. But um, like, will I'm writing as well and trying to put pen to paper and, you know, I've got stories to tell as well. And I feel like when you know, we write, it's so much more genuine. So I'm, I'm trying to jump into those moments now and be as creative as I can during these lockdowns. So yeah, that's a bit of me. Thanks, Leighton. And Alex? Hi, I'm Alex Thomas Smith. Uh, my pronouns are he, they. Um, I'm also a musical theatre performer. Um, I graduated um, five years ago now, so 2016, um, when Leighton was stomping around the scene um, <laughs> um, and yeah I've just been performing in shows ever since really I did Motown which was you know my black excellence and then um, did Battle of Hell which was my first queer role um, for me and it was just it was groundbreaking for me personally that's where I had my most um, where I did the most work on myself um, so it was really beautiful I think to find myself and then be able to put that on stage um, and then I did Now I'm in Jerevan Hansen and then I had to do Rent when I finished in Corona and then back to Jerevan Hansen when it's all over. Amazing. Thank you so much, everybody, for that. Um, so 
one of the things I love is that um, when I've spoken to you all about Rent or when I've seen you in Rent, um, you all have such a different take on Angel. And I think that Angel is one of those roles where there's a lot that an actor can put into it. And is one of those stories, Rent, where it has to keep on changing with the times. So Rent is set in 18, 18, no, not 18, 1989 or 1990, sort of towards the... Uh, well, certainly in the midst of the AIDS pandemic uh, in New York. Um, but it's really interesting how the role of Angel has evolved sort of over the 25 years that the show has been produced. And what I would be really interested to talk to you about would be uh, how you approached playing the role of Angel um, and, and what sort of things were in your mind as you started to kind of create that role. And obviously, uh, there'll be some thoughts with the directors involved in there as well, but I would love to hear your take on that. Uh, so perhaps if we start with Will again on that. Yeah, um, Angel, as as we've all said, is one of those iconic characters. I think as Leighton and Alex just sort of mentioned, like queer characters, especially musical theater, um, because they are few and far between. When we really get to inhabit those, we learn so much about ourselves and who we are. Um, I, I feel like I would be not even close to as in touch with myself as I am if I didn't go through the process of the sort of safety of the separation of exploring myself through someone else and being like, haha, I walk off stage and this isn't actually me, but I'm, I'm learning so much about myself. Plays exist like it to me and, and like three times simultaneously when they were written, when they take place and when they're being performed. And over the last 25 years, we have expanded our knowledge of like gender identity and um, performativity so much. Um, while other forms of queer entertainment have like entered the mainstream. And so there's a conversation around Angel where I think she gets uh, lumped into um, a category of drag roles. There, she's often referred to as a drag queen. And you know, in the last few years, in the last five years, um, drag has become increasingly like what we see on RuPaul's Drag Race. It's like very fierce, very that, very yes mama, very tongue pop, like, you know, that bitch. And excuse my language, um, but, um, and that's wonderful and really fun and really exciting. But when you look at the musical of Rent, um, Angel is the heart center. Like Angel is the beating heart that is tying everyone together. Um, and so for me, there's an element of that um, leading with like the I'm so fierce, I'm so fabulous, I'm so untouchable that makes her inaccessible in a way that she needs to to function for the musical. All of this happening while I am a young person in my 20s grappling with my own gender identity, having just come out of musical theater school, which does not create room for exploration or deviation from binary. It's very enforcing of that whole thing, which is so strange because musical theater is uh, populated by so many queer artists and seen by so many queer people. So anyway, to me, um, it was important to go, to think of Angel not as a drag performer. She's a performer, she's a drummer, but I, I don't see her as a, as a drag queen. I think that that is a conflation um, that was very prevalent in the 90s, you know, in downtown New York, the drag community and the trans community. But to me, Angel is like definitively a, a, a trans woman, a trans, and it was important for me to occupy it that way as I was stepping into my own trans feminine identity. So, yeah, so, so to that came through with, you know, a, a handful of choices. Rent, it has been constantly done over the last 25 years, so it's really hard to like, it, it always kind of has very similar aesthetics, like the scaffolding and the, the you know, the plaid and the mark scarf and all the things. So it's hard to separate yourself from some of those choices. But one choice that it was like, we got to subvert this was you're used to seeing Angel in her very first scene for You Okay, Honey, she's drumming on the street, normally like out of drag. Like normally you see her for the first time in the Santa outfit when she does Today For You. And so understanding who she was to me, I was like, this angel would not be walking around, you know, without her dress, without her heels, without her wig, without her, all of the things that make her her. Um, so, and for me, that was more impactful that when you get to eventually, you know, she becomes very ill. When you see her on her deathbed during Without You is the first time that 
you know, her partner helps her undress and she takes off her wig. And it's that sort of like complete vulnerability and um, exposing that's really um, harrowing um, to see someone stripped of who they are um, when they're infected with that disease. Um, yeah. That's Thanks, I... Will. No, that's brilliant. Um, it's, it's one of the things that's really interesting here is that it's so rare that we get actors together to, who played the same role to talk about the different ways that they played it. And one of the things I'm really keen, keen and I try and talk to my students about all the time is there's not necessarily a best way or a right way to play things. Or even, you know, if you're going through a script and it tells you to do something in a specific way, it's not even necessarily a historically accurate way to play things. And what's so fascinating today is that I know all three of you have very, very different takes on the role of Angel. And they all fascinate me. And I, and you know, I've seen Leighton and Alex, and I, I would love to see you play that role again one day, Will. But it's, I'm really interested to see how differently people see Angel. Um, so, um, Leighton, could you talk a little bit about the way that you approach the role? Absolutely. And you know what? Listening now and being like, actually, it's so funny because if I was to play the part again, maybe I probably would do it differently and my knowledge on you know identity and queerness and everything you know I myself um way more comfortable in my skin but then I I can honestly say I probably wasn't as clued up with um you know like trans non-binary language like I didn't really I thought you know you think you know what you're talking about but then in the moment like even with you know learning about you know the time and educate myself I was like whoa I thought I was I say woke with inverted commas because we're I'm a student of life darling I'm learning constantly but I thought I was there and you know I, it, I was learning as I went along but I remembered I remember in rehearsals the conversation kept coming up I was like I, I hated the first scene when like why am I wearing a converse honey like I, I do remember questioning I was like <laughs> This doesn't feel like, you okay, honey? No, are you okay? Because you don't look okay, because you're looking a bit busted. And I remember they used to say to me, like, make sure you don't have much makeup on before the first gig, but two months in, darling, she would shed for me. <laughs> I'm there, like, all I needed to do was put the lash on the lip at that point because she was contoured. Um, so I think now being more confident in myself, and knowing and having sisters and working, you know, I'm currently co-writing with a non-binary person, so I've learned so much um, through them as well. I would approach it differently, or the que there's a question out here that's being said that actually should a gay um, boy be playing a role now that we have evolved so much? Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm questioning that maybe, maybe not. I've had tapes come in of recent and being like, okay, it has to be, we're looking for a trans actor. And then I'm like, well, why, why are you sending this? Why is this in my email? Do you know what I mean? And only now I'm at a point even in my career that I can be questioning these things. But I know there's a point in the script where they do, I can't remember who it is, Mark refers to Angel as he, and it just used to cringe me out all the time. Because I, I just think surely Angel, the way I was playing Angel, I felt like I was always, when I was in my persona, I, I was, I guess, more so probably lending myself to drag but like I think if Rent was on now it would be point blank period Angel is trans right do we all agree yeah but um I of course as a gay man I was I guess playing dress up and I don't know whether that was the creative way we were going about it but like I said I didn't know as much as I know now and it is interesting because you know I think they're doing it on Australia now as well. And mm. um, oh, his name's gone from my head. Sean Miley Moore. Sean Miley Moore, fab from X Factor. But Sean is, I'm not sure what Sean's pronouns are and how her self-expression is, but I do know that she's that bitch. You see her in the gowns. She walks, she's, she's fully, she's, you know, angel in life. And I guess I am sometimes too. So I, I consider myself queer. I, you know, I've been new to, to be expressive in that way. So it was really, you know, when I went on stage, I, I felt like I was, I was always her. Um, and I agree with Will and I, I'm, I'm sure Alex has, um, Alex has a few things to say on the subject too. But yeah, it's interesting. I'm kind of doing full circle now because my mind's ticking, do you know what I mean? In a, in a positive way, I'm not like reading myself. <laughs> 
you know, I was taking the work, <laughs> I was getting the checks. <laughs> um, but it's interesting to look back, but I did have a magical time playing the part. I brought, I felt like I brought different vibes. The vulnerability to Angel was one thing that we definitely like um, worked on a lot. Cause at first, you know, I've got the legs, I've got the gags, I've got the flips, like that was just, that's a plus, but we need to make sure the heart, like you said, Will, if you don't, if you're not on side with Angel and you're not backing Angel from the get go, when Angel dies, you're like, do you know what I mean? Um, so it was a journey. And I mean, I saw Alex play the part um, in Manchester and I was just, I, I think I cried from start to finish. It just brings back all of them memories. Um, so much I forgot about as well. So yeah, it was an experience, but that's the kind of, I, I guess I, I went into Angel as an actor then, just kind of doing a bit more what I'm told, and that's not that I'm blaming other people, but I guess, yeah, I played it as an actor going in as a queer person, more drag, not probably wanting to be, but the more I went on in the part, the more I explored and thought, you know what, she wouldn't, she wouldn't be doing this. I had lots of say on some looks as well. We definitely, I think we all had different creators. It was not the original creations. Did, Will, did you do the zebra, the zebra legging moment? Oh no, I had a uh, Christmas uh, light tights morning, like situation. Mom. And the That's second it. act was caution tape situation. That's what we love. Yeah, I, I, love love that it was that. I love that you pointed out the pronoun moment though, because that is a huge, like it could pass by anyone. But yeah. it's a huge thing yeah. where the Mark, it's at her funeral too. Mark says he, and then corrects, corrects himself. himself. Yeah. And that to me is like, that's all the proof I need. That the fact that who who she is with her friends and mm -hmm. how the rest of the world sees her, it, it is that moment mm -hmm. of that, you know, especially happening in the 90s mm -hmm. um, that, that we... They didn't have the language then, did they? Mm -hmm. No. I'm not understanding. Um, even in 2016, now. And I think even actually going back, you know, five years, we perhaps didn't have the same language as we have now. But Alex, I'd really like to bring you in here because you've uh, you played the role most recently. And there's a lot of things about that particular production that changed, I, I guess, the way that Rent has been done in previous years. So perhaps if you could tell us a little bit about how you approach that role. Yeah, I mean, I think I was really lucky as well because um, my director was, he's hes very that and he's very aware of, of those things. So I had a Zoom with him before I even started and he was very much like, you know, how do you want to, to do this? How do you want to take on this role? Where do you think they fit in the world? And it was so great because you, like you girls know, like when you're in a, in a position sometimes, you're in a room, you're in a rehearsal room or something and you kind of feel like, you can say something, but you can't say too much. So it was really great that that door was open for me to be like, look, this is how I want to, you know, perform the role. And this is how I want to perform myself. So I was really lucky in that aspect. I just think like Will said, I, I hated, I really do hate the ideology of like, Angel is the drag queen. I think when Ren obviously was like, you know, put together or came out, there was such a different understanding of queerness and audience perception. And I think that is, how, you know, the category and the shoebox that Angel fell into. But I think coming out of that, just because like, it's so difficult to, to explain, but to an audience perceiving like a male in female clothing, they're like, oh, it's a drag queen because it's the easiest thing for them to like associate their mind to. Whereas I was like, I, I already came in being like, you know, like I'm obviously non-binary, but I will wear clothes that are made for men, clothes that are made for women, clothes that are made for whoever. And I was very much like, I saw that in Angel. And I, always, I think it's funny because I always think that I've wanted to play Angel for such a long time, but I feel like it's that role that comes to you when you're ready for it, or it comes to you when you're when it's right to be. And I feel like there's no way I would have been able to play that role before, before I did it, because I'm just so certain of who I am now as a person. And it's like, it's like you said, Angel isn't, I don't see Angel as a person in the show. They're like this light, this energy, this spirit. And it's so funny because I was in so many things that Angel isn't, you know, typically in like Mimi, when Mimi um, dies in your eyes, I like came out behind the curtain and I like lit the candle and it was like, you see Angel and it's like, when I watched it back, I was like, oh, it's so beautiful because Angel is like this figure. And it's just, yeah, I feel like Angel is more than 
a binary, more than this, more than that, more than that. It's just, they're just this being, this creation. And it's very beautiful to work with and to try and unpick that, especially when you as yourself are that kind of individual that doesn't fit into any binary. So yeah, I think it's, it's such a, a complex but special role, isn't it? I think it's a role that you, um, that all of you inhabit really beautifully and there's the, and it sounds like I mean the first question we have there is how did playing angel change your own sense of self and I feel like you've all talked about that you know just now as we were, were talking about things there um the other thing I was I was quite interested in particularly with the Hope Mill version but I know that Will um certainly Will has had experience and I think Leighton perhaps with Jamie has had experiences with this as well um but I know that for your um casting um Alex specifically the um the cast was predominantly queer um, mm -hmm. for Rent, which meant that when we see the ensemble, rather than just seeing a set of homeless people who may come from any uh, any background, we saw there a an ensemble where purposefully a number of the ensemble presented, I don't know how to say this in the right way, but but it was clear that it was a queer ensemble. Yeah. Um, and I was, I was speaking, I spoke a, a while back to an actor called Josh Castile, uh, in America, um, who is um, who is queer and also deaf, and he was talking about this idea of what shows gain by when they are translated into sign language, and this idea of deaf gain and the things that we all gain from the fact that that's happening, and we kind of were talking about this idea of queer gain. Is there something that we gain from even a musical like Rent, where where the you know, or especially a musical like Rent? where it's inhabited by a queer creative team, queer actors, what do we gain from that? Not necessarily saying whether it's better or worse, but what do we gain from, from that experience? And what did you gain from that experience of being in that cast, Alex? I think it might sound strange, but like safety. I remember there was one point in the rehearsal room and I looked around for the first time and there were queer people, trans people, black people, white people, like creative and cast. And I looked around and I was like, I feel safe here. I feel welcomed. I feel like, you feel like these are your people. So when you're like, you know, whether in the show or like off stage when you're in the audience, when you see, you know, people like yourself or people in different, in that community, all being allowed to express themselves, you feel, I feel safe. I feel, you know, I feel like I can, because as, as queer people, you put so many walls up and so many guards up in the in the real world. So when you're in a space where it's your people, I don't know about, about you all, but I just feel, I feel, I can, I can relax. I feel safe to be who I want to be. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Thanks, Alex. Will, did you want to add on to that? Yeah, the other thing that's important to me, especially when I'm looking at the ensemble of a play or the ensemble of a musical is like, we have to allow queer and trans people to be mundane, to be a part of everyday life, to be a part of the fabric of the world, because we are. We are everywhere. We don't only exist when we're like, when our only purpose is to be centered for our trauma. Like that's a really heavy thing to only be allowed to be present in that time. Um, like you and I talked about that production of Oklahoma that I mentioned. Um, and it was like all of these great, you know, they, they changed the, the genders of the couple. So it'd be about, you know, a lesbian couple and the secondary couple was a gay couple and the matriarch was played by a trans woman and like all this wonderful, amazing stuff. And then they <clears throat> brought me into the production to play an ensemble role. And I'm like, okay, cool, well, you know. But then they created a story um, out of a, out of a, a role with, that, had, that had no name, no lines, um, a, a, about like gender fluidity and coming into your own identity and all of these things that was like not a focus of the play at all, but was clearly happening concurrently. And when there, you know, are non-binary or trans, especially young people in the audience, like they notice that and it invites them to it to just be a part of the fabric of the world. I think that's so important. I, I, sorry, Leighton, I, I think you were gonna, were you gonna add something in there? No, I just agree. Like we don't always have to be the yes queen best friend. We don't have to be this, we can, we can send and we can just be living, we can just be there. We, you know, it's, I'm starting to see it a little bit more with the tapes that I am um, getting and stuff and we, we're kind of getting there, but. You're so right, just we're, we're here, we're living, we're being, and um, Angel is special, but the more, the more time goes on, we feel, I feel like I wanna see what, you know, why can't the milk gal be trans, do you know what I mean? 
Yes. <laughs> right. Why why is that to be out now? You know, we're AIDS, da, 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 da. you know, it's just amazing, but it's very on that subject. We we just need a little bit more and you know whether that's us having to put pen to paper and write these stories and just you know authentically beautiful but real um then so be it i'm down for the challenge but angel definitely helped me like i said it was my first role as an adult in musical theater eight shows a week as a lead so i'd done hairspray just before that but you know having the chops i was like god i don't know if this is gonna come out <laughs> so i was like yeah but <laughs> I got there sometimes, sometimes not. I had a click, I'm not even gonna lie. And listen, sometimes I'm gonna be tired and y'all gonna get, so if I turned, I use it like five times, like the whole run, so do forgive me. But he would just get the wink and it'd be like, hit the kiss, like, let me take me, take me, I love you. <laughs> like, and the lot is whenever Jordan used to go on my understudy, he was my best friend, but he was just not about them notes. He was like, put Layton's click on. <laughs> <laughs> we love the click but I'm not saying you use a click but I'm just saying just something that I remembered from that moment oh. it was so beautiful it's all coming back to me now I love it but it's I mean one of the other great things I think about Rent as well is that how it's that all of you came to the role of Angel in kind of very different I mean you're all fabulous in all areas of performing arts but I think I feel like you you kind of perhaps late when you came to the role of angel you came through very much to a dance role whereas um whereas perhaps that wasn't this i mean certainly the hope mill theater version there perhaps wasn't room to do that level of dance <laughs> although the, the choreography oh. was amazing you know the, the chair choreo choreography and stuff so i think that's one of the other things as well is it's one of those you know somebody was asking the question about um how it changed you as a performer um, you've got to put yourself into these roles like I know I can dance the house down boots so there's no way like I see her on um, the movie and you've been new that was a stunt double but guess what I do my own stunts so when I was in the room it was like okay well I can I can have the authenticity and the you know the vulnerability and the gag of Angel but I can I can translate that into other things you know um Angel has moments where she's, I think I'll copy is one of the most beautiful songs. Just mm -hmm. ever. like, I, I get tingly even like, so cringe when I was in New York um, last year, the year before. Like, you know, when you're in the streets and you just feel, I just put it on. And it's so, I even put up, like, I went on YouTube, I was like, Rank Cash 2016. And I literally listened to my- Not oh, your own vocal. <laughs> I was like, I need me and right, I needed to reminisce. And I was like, bum, 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 live in my house. And I was walking down the street, just like, and literally a tear like dry. Cause I remember it just like, it, just being in the streets was just magical. Cause I just needed to reminisce. But yeah, I definitely, funny story, when I went into it, my choreographer apparently said, Lee Proud, who I worked with when I did Billy Elliot. He was like my Mr. Braithwaite, if anybody knows that show. But he said, I basically need Leighton to play this part. And I'm not saying that I got it just because the choreography one obviously auditioned. But I remember getting in quick time, I was like, I not, I'm not really here for the casting breakdown to be out. But when, when my agent called me, they were like, how do you feel about Angel? I was, like, I was like, I don't know whether I can sing that because the first time I saw Angel live, I saw John McCray do it in like a small production in London. And he's my best friend and he's the person that also played Jamie before me. So I was like, to me, George, um, John is the voice. So I was like, I don't know if I can sing that, but I was like, I'll call you in an hour. <laughs> Got into the studio, I was like, yeah. I was like, get me in, get me in the room. And I literally sent in the self tape, put on my boots. And yeah, I, I felt like me bringing my dance element to it was just a little bit of fun. Like, why not? If you've got, if you've got it, flaunt it. So me and Lee had a really bad time. I mean, I did end up breaking my knee and having to have surgery and take a month or two out, but hey, I still got the gig. <laughs> so yes, God. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Thanks, Leighton, for that. Um, I was going to ask a question specifically to um, Will and Alex. Um, I think one of the most important things about seeing both of you as actors is the representation, is the uh, particular representation of trans and non-binary uh, people and there's a question here from Tracy who says what advice would you give to a young person who's very recently decided to come out as trans and how best can we support those of us that are allies how best can we support them I think for I think there are so there are so many expectations 
but also um, pre, like pre, what's the word? Pre like- Deep notions. Yeah, of what that means for people. So I would say like do your research and obviously learn as much as you can um, if you're best trying to help someone, but um, also allow them to be themselves. I know myself personally, a lot of people say to me, oh, you don't look non-binary or like, you know, and it's like, it's one of the most transphobic things to say to someone because it's like there's no specific way that people choose to identify so I but I feel like a lot of that does come from when people do research online and read books and things like that so I think do research but also allow that person to breathe in their own space and find them themselves figure themselves out yeah I thank you for saying that the thing that really just like grinds my gears more than anything is when people say exactly that kind of shit like well I do you don't you don't present in the way that I read as non-binary first of all this is about gender non-conformity and so if you have a singular idea of what that looks like I need you I need to refer you to a dictionary because there is no one way there like you don't so for young people like you don't owe androgyny to anyone um you don't and I say that you know coming there, there's an idea that people have in their head of like queerness and non-binariness that it's like skinny, white, androgynous. And while, you know, while I am like coming from a lot of those places, I'm like, please know that the picture is everyone. There is a million ways to look non-binary. There's a million ways to be yourself because the point is leading from your authenticity. And when we're talking about angel, that's what all three of us were trying to, we have our own angels because we are coming at it with full authenticity. So when it comes to like, you know, supporting trans people at the beginning of their journey, especially young trans people, let them lead, like give them space to try something, give them space to like try something and be wrong. There's a lot of pressure as a young person with social media being like, oh, I can't make this big announcement and then retract it later or try something and be wrong. Or, you know, you have to explore these things and these ideas before you can actually like know how to move forward. I spent a long time fully like hiding my self from my career because I was like I'm a chorus boy and going to like drag shows and being in nightlife and being like you know letting my hair down and, and actually going on that exploration so you just need to give them like the playground in which to find what they need to find and encourage them and cheer them and let them know that you love them and support them and will give them whatever they need and connect them with mentors and like solid representation of themselves. I think that's a really important thing as well is that there are a lot of networks out there um, to to help um, to help to um, support trans trans kids particularly I'm thinking particularly of, uh, of um, groups like mermaids uh, in the UK. Um, the other thing I would just recommend for those people who are allies is there's this book here which is by Meg John Barker and Julia Schill called Queer a Graphic History. Uh, and it, it's a really lovely book in terms of thinking about different ways of the, that queerness works. And there's also a companion book. They happen to be right next to me on the shelf uh, <laughs> called Gender, A Graphic Guide, which is also by um, Meg John Barker and Julia Sh and Jules Schill. Sorry, Jules it is. Um, and they're just really simple, straightforward ways. But they also are not things that try and answer everything. Um, one of the things that I love about talking about non-binary things is it means it's not just about being neither or being sometimes one and sometimes the other. It's also about being both. And it's such an inclusive thing. And, you know, the trans people that I've met and I've been lucky enough to meet have been such a joy and in the way that they uh, open up. And like Will says, because it's non-conforming, it completely opens up for everyone else. So we're kind of th almost thinking about the idea of non-binary gain there. Uh, if you like. Um, so, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm talking too much shush now, me. Um, uh, I, there is a couple of other questions I wanted to, um, this is an interesting one, is um, in recent years, rent has been seen problematic because of the inauthentic representation of bisexual women and Angel's story being somewhat overlooked in favor of other characters. 
uh, Vicky Victoria says, I'm a believer in the restoration and maintenance of older musicals, even though they may feature some problematic content. I'd like to know how you surpass controversial things within the material and attempt to bring that into your characterization in order to change the negatives into positives. That's quite a long question, Ooh. isn't it? <laughs> I'm not sure the question or the statement, but I kind of feel where you're coming from, Stiz. Mm. But I feel like, I don't know whether it was in my head, but Angel was that bitch. <laughs> Period. Do you know what I mean? I didn't ever feel like Angel was overlooked in my, um, what, even in my view now watching, I know, and it's all, it's all, I guess what you take away, what you see is what you see. Do you know what I mean? Art, that is art. You know, when I say to people, come see the show and like, my nano something, bless her, she'll be like, oh, I didn't, like when I've done shows without words, my family are like, Phew. So what, I'm going to come and see you dance for two hours. Like, what, what's the point in that? Like, but then I'm like, what did you see? What did you learn? And like, well, I thought this happened. I was like, well, if that's what you thought happened, that's what happened. Because that was your interpretation of the show. Do you know what I mean? So everyone will have their different opinions. Do you know what I mean? Um, but what I like to do is when I go see a show, you know, you have expectations at the bell and what you take from it, you take from it. So if that's how you feel, um, inauthentic representation of bisexual women. Mm. That, that was another quite interesting one. In I suppose the thing that I may be wrong with this, but in most productions I've seen of Rent, I don't think, whereas we're, we're quite keen to make sure that the, uh, there are trans or non-binary or gay people playing Angel, I don't think the same care has been taken necessarily in it's casting well. the female characters. Right, right, right. True, and I must say, I must admit that I've never even given that a thought and that, that's bad. Mm. And it's only struck me now, right here in that Zoom, that's very true. I, I couldn't tell you one lesbian actress that has played that part that I know of. No, I mean, Millie, awesome. Millie is queer. Mm. Ah, there we Super go. Super bisexual. Mm. And They're also both. Maureen's whole thing as just being like, I'm a slut and I'm bisexual because mm. I want everyone to want me. It's like probably does not feel authentic to a lot of bisexual people in general. Um, and the, like, the issue is, is because like we're exploring these tropes as tropes. Mm -hmm. um, like even in a groundbreaking musical like Rent, like musical theater as a form is like, can be very reductive very quickly. Everyone has their like literal function to fulfill and then sings from that place. So I, I feel like when trying to, like the question I feel like is about salvaging the, the best thing that I think you can do is bring the fullness of yourself to the character. Because we can't really change the text, really. Um, we try to elevate the text sometimes. Um, but, yeah. yeah. I also think it's really important to remember that some of the things in Rent that I think, oh yeah, that should, that maybe that should be, or maybe that should be, I think A, like, yes, it was, you know, like 25 years ago, whatever, but B, like the beauty of Rent is that it's like, it's not finished. Obviously Jonathan Larson sadly passed before mm. the, like it was finished. So like, yeah, they opened in previews or, or whatever, but I feel like that's the stage where you watch a show and you're like, okay, let's take out this song. Let's put this in, let's change this, let's change that. But that never got to happen. And I think that's one of the most beautiful things about Rent is that it was, it's not finished. It, what we have is, is what we have. It's not perfect, yes. I do think some songs, some moments <laughs> would have got charts but on day two, but obviously day two didn't happen in my house because of said reasons. So there's definitely like, <laughs> there's some moments where I was like, Phew, "Woo!" But we, we've got we've got to we've got to pay, pay homage to the art and to the script and to the book, and you can't go changing these things now. So yeah, we're just gonna um, try and represent it as best we can. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. there's a couple of things I wanted to add in there. I mean, I don't know how many people are aware of this, but there's an album uh, called the Jonathan Larson Project. Um, which is a load of songs which were some of which were intended for rent some of which were intended for another musical that um, Jonathan Larson was working on called Superbia and some of which were attended um, intended for Tick Tick Boom and actually listening to that album completely changed the way I think about rent because I think I also had this thing about why are Mark and Roger the center why are the straight white men right in the middle of it of course that's me making an assumption that those two characters are straight and I think with Mark there's definitely a question that it can be asked there mm -hmm. that project because in that in that there's there's songs like um there is a song literally called straight white men on that album and it completely it gives you a really different side to Jonathan Larson 
and some of the songs that were written for it as well. They're really interesting. So I thoroughly recommend giving that album a listen to give more context to Larson's work. Um, but the other thing I was going to say, because we brought up Millie playing that role of, of Maureen, it felt there was something about that performance, Alex, that felt so much the way that, that, that um, Millie and Jocasta did Take Me or Leave Me, there was a really big difference because it was much more fun and lighter than when I've seen it done previously. I, I don't know whether that was something that was talked about during the kind of rehearsal process. It was, but it was also just from the joy of watching two queer women be play two queer roles. Do you know what I mean? Like when you allow queer people to tell our own stories, you're gonna see a much different and a much more truthful performance. It's just how it is. Yeah. And I think that's that's something definitely that's really important that we need to kind of uh, keep on uh, thinking about. And you know, they are, Leighton was talking about writing. You know, and I know that that you know we've all been involved in developing new work, whether it's as writers or as actors and that kind of thing. And I think that's such an important thing um, as well. I'm going to try and get through a couple more questions if if we can. So. Um, uh, somebody, this is an anonymous thing. Have you got any advice for someone figuring out their pronouns? Uh, the the person says, "I've always gone by she, her, but I think I prefer she, they." I think. Sorry, did you want? No. Did someone jump in? No. Um, I think I think it's always try it out and see. Also, I, I, it's always so important to remember that we, as society, created these like structures and these words like we made them up so therefore we get to forfeit them you know what I mean so like I when I first started you know being like oh I don't know if I'm this I don't know if I'm this I was just like I'm gonna try and then when people started referring to me as something different I was like huh like and it makes you feel something different as well because of these like limitations that you've set for yourself so I feel like just it's all trial and error just try it out and then if something sticks for you maybe like go with that or just have none. Like I know people who, who don't use them because they're like, I am cis. So my name is cis. You can refer to me as cis. I'm cis, period. I everyone know. cis, everyone yeah. cis. This is it, this is it. So it's definitely it's different for everyone, but try it out, just try it. Try it out and tell your friends like in a safe space, tell them it's like, if, if using both those pronouns means I'd like you to alternate and use both. If you're like, actually I'm ready to hear the other one more, like ask your people to go on that journey with you and they will and you will feel what you will feel and everyone will support you absolutely and it is a learning game for all of us i've been learning as a gay man myself like you know a couple of years ago i couldn't even get my head around non-binary like chat like it, it it took a lot of education for myself to be like, right, well, I can't be not understanding when I'm part of this beautiful queer community. Do you know what I mean? So can you imagine if, you know, trying to explain this to a straight white man, a cis straight white man, do you know what I mean? It's, it's if, if we find it difficult and we find it, I wanna say difficult, but um, a shift, then we have to be patient with others. So I yeah. think I try to have as lot of patience as possible. Like I said, I'm writing with a non-binary person at the moment. And whenever somebody will misgender them, I'm like, oh, just so you know, because also it's on me to check. Like I'm getting us into these rooms, these meetings, these moms, these producers, honey. <laughs> and I have to let them know, like, because I don't want Reese to feel a certain type of way. I literally say, by the way, my co-writer is non-binary, so please use these pronouns. And just one little simple email like that, boom, you can go to a meeting. So they don't sort of like, you're right, lads. And I'm like, oh do you know what I mean I would be mortified so it's right. just not saying that I'm taking it upon myself but like I do my bit in order to make my co-writer um comfortable in these spaces and we can do that that's great thank you I've got another book recommendation for those of you who enjoy reading um but there's a a um, non-binary author in the UK called CN Lester um who's written a book called Trans Like Me and it's a really lovely very personal book um, but it covers a lot of these questions and a lot of things about pronouns and and feelings and that kind of thing. And I really recommend as much as you can reading tr uh, things about non-binary gender and and transgender people but that are written by non-binary and trans people. Yeah. And I'll just pop that in the um, in the chat for you. I started reading that book, but like you said, it because it's like a personal account. It's quite it is quite personal. So I feel like if you read it, if you're if you're ready to read it, I started reading it and I was like. Ooh. This is enough because it, it, it does evoke your own feelings, which is great because that's what great, you know, great writing is supposed to do. But read it if you're ready to read it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I think that's true of anything that's to do with 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 academic books, uh, particularly on this subject and particularly if it's about you 
I think that's a really good advice. Thank you uh, for that, Alex. I've just got one more question. Um, I hope that we've answered the questions about uh, Paul's question about how Angel changed your sense of self and Lottie's question about how Angel helps you to discover more about your identity. I feel like we've probably answered those as we've gone through. Um, and I think I'm just going to finish with Shannon's uh, question, which is out of all the roles you have played, I think this is apart from Angel, which one did you connect with the most and why? And Shannon says, also adore you all, <laughs> which is lovely. <laughs> um, shall we, uh, let's, let's go with Will first with that. Um, I think since Angel, I have connected more to all of my characters because I have decided that instead of trying to transfigure and morph myself into other people for the stage, I wish there was more people like me that I saw in plays and theater and in film and movies. So I've decided to just bring them all to me. So sometimes when I'm playing multiple characters and the same story, I'm like, okay, I gotta do a little bit of acting and like make this part of myself this and this part of myself that. But um, I've made a commitment to, um, to, to, to put myself, a lot of myself, as much as myself as any role can contain into my work. And now and based on this journey that started with Angel and now they've all been the most um, rewarding, whether I'm doing a musical, whether I'm doing children's theater, when I'm, whether I'm doing Shakespeare, um, I'm infusing myself and my queerness and my gender identity into the work and I love them all. Hey, love that. I think putting yourself into a character is absolutely what something that I've been doing as well. Well, I, I think probably Jamie for me has been like the moment that's just, it's kind of, you know, one of them pinch me moments and playing a part, you know, I can relate to Jamie in many ways, you know, being a queer gay boy with, you know, grew up in a council state, just the same Northern town. It was very relatable in that sense. I do, I just find it quite hard at first because I was, my 16 year old is a very different, person to the 16 year old I was playing. So I had to remember that, you know, when I was 16, I'd already had, you know, West End shows under the belt, TV hits, et cetera, et cetera, I won't boast. Um, but you know what I mean? So my 16 year old self was not a normal 16 year old's life. So that was one thing that I had to really get my head around and explore the vulnerability more and, you know, act. <laughs> but um, I definitely put Leighton, it's the more, the more of me I put into these characters better. And, you know, I found it more difficult playing straight parts. I remember going in, I remember going, I did Hairspray Ensemble, Rent, and then I went straight into Hairspray again, but she booked seaweed, darling. She got a little top up, because <laughs> I was calculated queen. But then I'd gone from womb, and then I stepped into the rehearsal room and I, I forgot to even consider, I was like, oh my God, you're, this is like 366. I was like, how are you gonna do this? I remember looking at myself in the mirror, I was like, God, we've got a lot of work to do because I remember doing it and I just didn't feel like it was, I was still kind of me. And I, I didn't want, I wanted to show people that I could be diverse in that moment. And, but when I started to accept that I would be bringing me into it, that's when the acting got better, which is so strange because the more latent I put into it, then it did move into this kind of more straight, I'm saying this acting, you know, with inverted commas here, um, sissy kind of moments. So in a weird way, me just accepting that I've got to put myself into this straight character helped me. So I think I can, I think I fooled y'all. So again, you might not agree, but hey ho. But yeah, but definitely Jamie was, was my one. Um, Alex? Yeah, I think I kind of, it's just like, for me, there's, there's, Playing Angel, is it changes you in so many ways. And moving forward, I think from here, I'm just like, you just figure out so much about yourself when you play that role. And yeah, I like I, I did play a queer role in Battle of Hell, which was like so monumental to me as a person and my own gender identity and all that stuff. But then, but from since doing Rent and playing that role, I'm just like, I'm not, I don't think I'm here anymore to play to, to fit into playing straight roles. I mean, there's enough straight people out there. They can play them themselves. I only want to tell my story from now on because I'm, I'm, it's just it's just so much more fulfilling. It's hard to it's hard to put into words really what it's like when you play something that is a part of you in front of people. Because it's almost like, I don't know about, about your, but it's almost like your whole life, you kind of, you don't want to present that part of you to people. And now it's like, oh, we're allowed to present that to other people so it's it's so liberating so it's like moving forward for me it's like that role how I want to 
play roles moving forward, if that makes sense. <laughs> that makes yeah. absolute sense. Absolutely. And that was put so beautifully. Thank you, Alex. Um, did anyone want to add anything? Leighton, I know you've got to rush in a bit, but does anyone want to add anything else that we haven't talked about at all? I did want to pick off of something Alex said at the beginning, um, which was the way that we sort of, and, and it sort of addresses, there was like a question about straight actors playing queer roles and James Corden and all that. The reason that Angel got put into the category of drag roles is because we have historically viewed that as like, that is a character that's played by a male actor um, in, you know, female dress. And so, Obvi like to us, we, we can agree that that maybe not, that would maybe not be how that person in real life would identify. But this is a huge thing, not only in musical theater, but in Hollywood and in films. We are used to seeing people like Jared Leto putting on, you know, the story of what it is, be what it is to be a trans woman um, and then be like lauded for that, awarded for that. And so this is all like really, really expertly um, sort of um, gone through in the documentary Disclosure on Netflix, which I would highly recommend. But the thing that I wanna point out, and I'm gonna jump from the beginning to the end, um, but it's, it, it's real, is that when we train um, the masses to think of trans people as you know men in, in dress or women in, in dress, as opposed to who they actually are, most um, people do not know, personally know a trans person. They only know what they see on the media. Mm -hmm. So that confirms when they see the award being accepted in a suit, that confirms what they don't understand. And at the end of the day, that is what contributes to like hatred and othering and in the United States, especially like literally the violence and murder against trans women of color. So there's a lot that goes, there's a lot that you would not even think of of the connection tissue between those two things. Um, but just to get that question in there, I think that's why it's so important to see queer people telling their own stories. Not only is it more nuanced and just better normally, like Alex said, um, but it's in- Oh, better, period. <laughs> it's just better. <laughs> but it's like, it, it, it's actually, it, 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 it is a matter of safety and of life and death at the end of the, end of the, end of the day where we are the people tasked and with the privilege of making our community understood to the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. I think that, thank you so much. And thank you all so much for everything that you brought today. I hope that was a, um, a useful hour for everyone. It certainly was for me. Um, uh, I just want to say that we've got a couple of other panels coming up over the next two weeks. Uh, next week, we've got um, Aaron Blair Mangot, uh, Beth Hinton Lever, and Callum Heinrich, who are going to be talking about bisexual and pansexual representation in musical theatre. And then the following week, at the same time, we have a queer writing panel with Finn Anderson, Tanya Azevedo, and Laura Shine, who are going to be talking about writing queer characters in musical theatre um, as well. I've just put those links in. I've realised I've just sent them just to the panellists. So that was really not very helpful. Um, there's a couple of links there. But thank you all so much for joining us. Thank you again to the panellists. Thank you. Alex and Leighton. And thank you to the events team and to the University of Wolverhampton Arts Fest for hosting us. Thanks very much, everybody. Bye, thank everyone. You. Rainbow. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.